Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. We're going to do the sponsor list at the end of the show. I like to alternate because I take a while to get into the questions usually, um, but I've got something else I want to say at the end, so that's why I don't want to take the time to do it at the beginning because it might be tough for me to do at the beginning overall. Uh, just as an update, I've been playing a lot of Dauntless this last week, so expect a video for that this week. I'm working on my next WoW to 14 video, which is going to be about crafting and gathering, obviously comparing WoW's crafting and gathering for character to the way that Final Fantasy 14 does it. Obviously, we have the live letter this Friday, which I'll be hosting a live stream for, um, a translation discussion live stream. We'll have a video on that. We'll have State of the Realm that same day, Friday, May 11th. So it's going to be a really busy week. Also, Maple Story 2 comes out May 9th, and yes... I'm going to stream it for the lulls. I hope, <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So that's just a couple of things that are going to happen this week. Let's get into the questions since I took forever to get into them last week. All right, so let's start with question number one. Hi, Haps. Just watch Mondays with Mr. Happy 192 a week ago and let's go. Oh, okay. I was confused. I was like, of course it was a week ago. That's Oh, okay. I get it. I get what you're saying. More details, better communication, less punishment. All right. So those, this is this is a roulette. I pick one. Better communication? I think I could guess what that's about. I'm going to go with less punishment. Should we get punished for missing a, for missing a 30 minute, 60 minute, 90 plus, etc. queue? Oh, so you're saying like if you sit in a queue for so long, it's feasible that you may have just walked away from your computer at that point. I don't think that's something they specifically need to target. I mean, you as a person should know there should be a point where you go, you know what? I'm done. I don't think it's on them to give people less punishment for sitting in longer queues. Um, if anything, I'd like them to, to just boost rewards if you happen to be sitting in a longer queue up to a certain maximum. Like if you're forced to wait 15, 20, 30 minutes for a queue, it'd be nice if the reward sort of scaled to that queue time. Now, I'm not saying they should nerf the queue times or nerf the rewards for the people of short queue times, but having this sort of in incentive to, I guess, multitask, you know, maybe go and do something that you can do while you're waiting on a queue, while waiting on the queue, I think that would be, it's not great, it doesn't actually help reduce queue times at all, but at least for sitting in the queue, you got something back for it, at least up to a maximum of an hour or something, but less punishment? No, I think at some point you just should know, I'm done with this queue, I'm gonna go do something else. Question number two. Hey, Haps, how you doing? I'm doing I. You doing I? I'm doing I. Do you think they'll ever add a five to eight man dungeon? Typical four man's getting quite stale. Well, the problem with the typical four man is mostly what you can actually do with four people in a party. One tank, one healer, two DPS. There's no tank swaps. If the healer dies and you don't have somebody to res who's a DPS, you're screwed. It, it very much limits what you're capable of doing. Five to eight man, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of something like Palace of the Dead that's designed for five to eight people with the later floors being designed for a full party of eight. Um, but adding a specific, a five to eight man dungeon, five, you can't just do a five man dungeon because then that just adds a DPS. And again, there's not really much more you can do there. Um, and then with six and seven, those are just weird numbers because where do you add the additional role? So it needs to be a straight up eight man. I feel if you're going to do something along those lines, and I'm not against that. The reason why they don't do it is because it's difficult for a lot of people to find consistency and finding seven other people to play with. So creating lots of activities for one to four people is more popular amongst uh, the people who don't really go out of their way to speak on forums or talk much about feedback. Uh, they only really talk when they just there's no content for them to do or there's nothing being added for that range of people. So I would I totally agree with you. Four man is not great. I think there, it, it limits them a lot. I just don't think they'll do a five to eight man in any way capacity and if they do i think again a, a deep dungeon style thing is all we'd really see question number three sup haps sup my fc brought an interesting question if square enix is allowing villains to switch sides what about one if one of the core scions switch sides and turns evil i mean that's just speculation i mean you can they can do whatever the hell they want it's their story whether it's amnesia or possession like we had with Ancred all those times ago like they can do whatever the hell they want. There's nothing to dictate what can and cannot happen. So this is kind of one of those questions that can't really go anywhere because we're not the ones writing the story. We're not the ones developing the game. So what we think could happen or will happen is, no is nothing more than speculation and they'll do whatever the hell they want, as will that motorcycle that just drove by. So uh, could it happen? Absolutely. Is this a... 
is this an answer to, or is this a well thought out or concise or you know important answer in any regards no because there's no good answer for it question number four we'll go through these pretty quick this week howdy hapsters that's i'm not a hapster so i'm i'm the haps i don't know so you're talking to everyone else who's asking questions and not me that's weird uh, I now have all the Mendesta gear I need with 4.3 coming soon. We will likely be seeing a new use for Mendacity Tomes. Could I save them? Uh, I don't think so. Mendacity Tomes, they don't really introduce materials that you can buy with the weekly lockout stuff until it's no longer a weekly lockout. Not to say there won't be anything you can't spend Mendacity Tomes on. Obviously, we don't know what the plans are for things like Pagos or... Uh, the next deep dungeon, but odds are there's not really much to save for. Uh, if anything, you'll need them even less because there's going to be more gearing options for people who are not all the way to that item level 370 marks. I, you can save them if you don't need them and then just spend them if you're going to cap. That's what I usually do every major patch, but is there anything in particular? No, I don't think so. Question number five. What's up, Mr. Happy slash fist bump? Yo. There you go. I'll, I'll, uh, this, I'll pretend this is your hand and then this will, and yeah, there you go. I'm a career tank and I've done so in every MMO I've played. It's all I enjoy most, but I do enjoy DPSing when I get the chance. Then you must love tanking in Final Fantasy XIV. Unfortunately, healing is something I found myself really being unable to do well. Last time I tried, it didn't go well. I'd like to figure something out. I'd like to give a shot here in 14. What would you say would be a good healing job to start on? I think White Mage is like the most bare bones basic. I heal... I protect, but most importantly, I can still attack. Uh, Astro is is cool. The card drawing can distract you if you're not someone who's used to healing, though. And card drawing is something you have to do very quickly. You can't sit on a card and be like, hmm, well, I wonder what I want to do with this card. You know, you have to be moving, you have to be going through the motions pretty quickly on Astro. Um, and Scholar, Scholar is pretty easy to get into. It becomes more difficult to master later down the line. Um, I think White Mage is probably the simplest one for you to directly be contributing to the actions. And Scholar would be if you'd want your fairy to do some of the heavy lifting, but you, of course, still have to participate both in the form of DPSing and healing altogether. I think uh, I would go with White Mage, personally. And it is it is my favorite healer to play right now, so I may be a little biased. But uh, I would go with you. White Mage, that's the answer. I haven't seen the next questions yet, but this might be the quickest Mondays with Mr. Happy, depending on how the Twitch questions go at this point. Uh, question number six. Hey, Haps, hope everything is well. I'm doing all right. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. I'm having trouble finding a static, but I'm still wanting to pug in progress while looking. Is there a better, better night for pugging? Dude, Tuesday. The night of the weekly reset. Now, you say, is there a better night for finding better groups? Dude, Tuesdays are the nights. Now, granted, Tuesdays are the nights for weekly clears or the pugs are best. If you're looking for something first time clear, you're going to be <laughs> you're, you're going to be disappointed more often than not. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday, happy days. Doesn't matter. You're you're not going to have a good time a lot of the time. So just I'd say just hop into any pug that even remotely seems interested and can fill all of its slots uh just you're gonna go through some bad pugs anyone who pugs is used to this and if that's the life you want to lead then that's that's the life you're gonna lead and you're gonna you're gonna be as frustrated during the wipes as you are excited when you finally kill it trust me i pugged for delta escape other than 04 and man did it feel good when i actually cleared that stuff Question number seven. Hey, Mr. Happy, have a nice week. I will do my best to do that, Dart. Question, what is up with the second boss in Circus Town? As in, what does he do? Because we kill him so fast, he doesn't actually get to do all any of his mechanics. Shrek dies so fast, you can't even see any mechanics. Yeah. So the big thing that he does is he summons... First, he summons a bunch of small Magitek bits, or whatever they're called in his fight. And they... They basically channel energy into him and people have to walk into them in order to make them attackable. And then you just have to make sure they don't feed enough energy into him from the white group. The second thing that happens is he goes into the middle and summons three ads. And those ads need to be completely separated from each other and killed off one by each alliance. And then you have to use the platforms that opens up in order to jump off of the main platform and then kill a bunch more ads to return to the main platform. You will never see those mechanics ever again. And if you do, I'm actually wondering how your group made it past the first boss, who is significantly more difficult. I'm also wondering what the hell is going on in your Circus Tower in the first place, if you even remotely get to see either of those mechanics at this point. So, 
it is a pretty cool fight it was really easy but groups always screwed up the positioning on the big ads you'd always have like group a's tank standing where group c's tank is supposed to be people not going to markers like healers pulling aggro it was just it used to be just a disaster in like the stupidest of ways but now you will not see past the small bits you'll barely see the small bits in the first place so yeah you uh you'll never see that again uh let's see i love some mechanics and be skip but not the cost of the challenge yeah all 24 minutes just fall over They've, it's mostly due to job changes and eventually item level um obviously their item level synced but with the job changes and everyone sitting at on average max item level for those places it's just just gone just <laughs> hilarious all right question number eight hey haps this is kind of a late question to ask is it do you think the do you like the changes they made to cleric stance in 4.0 i don't think that's a late question i mean is it on point with something recently no but we're still talking about stormblood here um that's actually something i i think i discussed on stream not too long ago i actually do miss the original cleric stance uh the skill expression that came with cleric stance i felt was good i felt like the usage of it was a little bit uh what was, what was the word i would use a little clunky you know uh, accidentally double tapping it but you know and then that reactivating it not being able to get rid of it for five more seconds you know even just having a two second cooldown on activation or deactivation would have i guess fixed that slight bit of clunkiness but i always liked the skill expression that came with with cleric stance you know you could clearly tell when a deep when a healer was balanced enough to know how much healing was needed in the given time versus how much damage they could put out in a given time it, it you don't get that much anymore now it's just you know you throw you throw whatever you throw regens or a healing buff on the tank and then you just dps until you happen to need to heal and there's no swapping ultimately it feels very similar but without that individual skill expression that came with cleric stance i wouldn't mind getting it back but i know that they would never bring it back at the same time question number nine hey mr happy because of school i paused final phase 14 for a few months and i'm still trying to catch up in eureka i see that the warring lantern from sephiroth extreme still plays the wrong music yeah, I don't have that mount, because the game hates me, so, yeah. My question, I'm playing Eureka because of the grind for the next Relic. Uh, will all steps of the new Relic take place in Eureka? Yes, all steps of the new Relic will take place in Eureka. We're expecting at this point, we feel more confident to say this, a new zone for Eureka uh, between every major patch. We received the first zone in 3.25, we're expecting one in 3.35, 3.45, 3.55, 3 until the next expansion actually releases. Um, so yeah, Eureka is going to be a location. How it changes from zone to zone, we don't really know yet. We know they're adding some quality of life catch-up mechanics to Animos, and they'll will probably exist in Pagos for people who don't have as much time to play. But we don't know what will actually change gameplay-wise. Like, what will be the goal? Will Pagos be the exact same goal as Animos, except that it's now Pagos crystals instead? That's that's the thing we're uncertain of. But yeah, all the steps will be taking place inside Eureka. We're already on the last question of the forum. This, this is actually the fastest I've ever gotten through forum questions. I've had like six or seven forum questions take longer than all 10 of these combined. You guys answered, and there were good, easy questions too that I had nice answers for. But anyway, um, question number 10 before we move on over into the Twitch questions. Hey, Mr. Happy, long time viewer, but it's been a while since my last question, so have, here's a cookie. I will take your cookie. Anyway, recently switched over to the PC version after playing on the PS4 for about two and a half years. Currently, I'm trying to find the script to the switch to keyboard and mouse a bit awkward. Do you have any recommendations on how to make that switch? So the biggest thing is if you're not used to being a PC gamer in the first place, figuring out what, what you're comfortable in in all games is probably the most important thing you need to figure out. This will not be a Final Fantasy XIV exclusive thing you need to figure out. For me, I just try to map as many things for my left hand that is close to my movement keys. I use q w e and s so a d r f z x c v t g all of those are viable keybinds to me shift one two three four five six one two three four five six itself control one two three four five six alt one two three four five six those are all viable keybinds for me because i'm comfortable with them i also have an mmo mouse uh shout out to our sponsor steel series because this is theirs let me see if i can get I've got so much shit here. There you go. There's my Steel Series Rival 500 MMO mouse with its ergonomic design and additional hotkeys, which I also have bound to shift and control, meaning I probably have another 20 or so hotkeys on this thing itself. So having an MMO mouse is a pretty good option when you're swapping over to PC to get some, get some of the pressure off of the hand you're moving with and move more of the skill execution pressure onto your right hand. 
there's a some people will put all of their skills on a mouse on its buttons if they have an MMO mouse and literally just focus on moving with their left hand. It all comes down to preference and you're going to have to screw around with a few things. But try messing around with find out if you're comfortable with shift modifiers, if you're comfortable with controller alt modifiers. Find out how far down the 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 etc part of the keyboard the numbers that you can actually reach comfortably without feeling like you're giving up your ability to move and dodge. So there's it's all about comfort. So do some research. I I look at a bunch of other people's setups and see what ends up working out best for you. And uh, yeah, just gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's basically gonna be a little project you just taken on, and uh, hopefully you have a little fun figuring it out. That's gonna be the last question from the forums in record time. I don't think I've ever gone through forum questions this quick. So if Twitch questions suck and I don't have any to add to the video, this is gonna be a really short weekly Q and A. So Twitch chat before I go on to my sponsor list and there's something I want to say at the end of this video. Uh, let's see if Twitch chat has any decent questions. Whatever, throw them at me. All right, so I've got a very simple question here that I'm going to throw in the video, so at least I have something from the Twitch chat. It's a topic I do like talking about, though. It's, will the pets in 14 ever be fixed so that their response time isn't horrible? I don't think so. Honestly, I feel like Final Fantasy 14, with their pet system in particular, they either need to just go back to the drawing board entirely on it, or scrap it. I know it seems silly because you're thinking right now, Summoner Scholar without pets? I feel like there's ways to incorporate, I guess, a, a being being part of your existence without it being out or being controllable necessarily all the time. I guess when I think of that, a completely different game, but still Final Fantasy related, the city of Duodecim has Yuna in it. And Yuna basically just summons them for her attacks and then they go away. You know, they don't just sit on the arena and attack on their own. And I feel like maybe making the pets uh, an actual extension of your actions, like when you perform an action, it causes them to perform an action, as opposed to them having their own hotbar and having commands and placements and health bars and all that stuff. I, I feel like there are definite downsides to that. I, I, can, I can think of a bunch and I won't spend this time to go into them compared to the way that we use them now. But I feel like with the way it works, honestly, half the time people just don't want to put up with it and just put them in auto anyway like it's even when it isn't efficient and it is efficient at times because of how how clunky they can be but even when it isn't efficient people are like i don't want to deal with that shit so here there you go that's i, I don't i don't want to do it i don't want to i don't want to deal with it all right I'm, I'm done so i know i don't think they fixed them i think this is something they have committed themselves to and will probably not undo nor will they many make a major change uh on that level all right, so I have another question from the Twitch chat. Hey, Haps, my FC has decided to play WoW during our downtime. The question for you, which should go with your current series, the WoW to 14 series, presumably, is what classes in WoW feel the most like jobs in Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, that's a tough one because with in, even in the first two videos that I've done, one of them is about the global cooldown. And the way that you can design things when your global cooldown is even just a second apart is so massively different that unless you're looking at general themes... It's hard to, to peg something entirely. I probably would have had a better answer looking back at, um, you know, the older expansions. Like, Realm Reborn, you could just say, hey, Summoner's like Warlock. It was easy. And then even in Heaven's Heavensward, Summoner's like Warlock. Now with the whole Demi Bahamut thing, you know, Warlock doesn't, even Demo Lock doesn't necessarily, like, have this long gauge of you know what you're doing where you have this phase and you fall out of the phase and that builds towards the demi bahamut then you go into the phase again builds a demi bahamut demi bahamut has all this action they they're still i guess conceptually comparable where it's like you're a dot your focus is on applying dots and you have a pet that's pretty much where summoner starts to feel like warlock scholar i can't really think of a healer other than any of the shielding healers but none of the wow healers have this pet that you can micromanage that has its as an infinite MP pool. They have things that, you know, maybe you could resemble to it in World of Warcraft, but um World of Warcraft I I don't know, man. It's been so long since I played. I don't really I'm not really familiar with most of the recent changes. Like I don't know what's happened to, to demo locks. I don't know what's happened to disc priests. Like I, I don't know anything about monk. I know what it's different things. I know what different roles it can play, but I don't know what's changed about Ellie Shaman. I don't know what's changed about, uh, you know, Rhett Paladins. You know, it's just, it's been so long. Like, I guess you could compare Prot Paladin to Final Fantasy XIV Paladin. That's as close as it's going to get. Warrior to Warrior, you know. Um, 
Dark Knight to Death Knight. Like, those are some of the easy ones, you know. Uh, Bard, you can't really compare to, to Hunter in any real capacity. Uh, other than they both shoot... They both shoot gun, or bow in this case. Machinist then also. Machinist has a gun. Bard has a bow. Hunter's just got ranged weapons. They don't, you know, they do whatever. So, theme-wise... There are technically a lot of similarities, but it's hard for me to draw direct comparisons. There, there are some builds or some specs in, in WoW that also match them more so. But because WoW just does them differently, like the flow of combat is so different, it's hard to get a direct comparison. Uh, and one that I feel happy about. I'm sure people in the in the Twitch chat or in the YouTube comment section can come up with, with what they would consider the direct comparisons. But I don't feel like because you like one class in 14 or one job in 14, it means you'll like a specific class in WoW because they're not going to flow the same at all. Like you kind of have to treat them as two different beasts that just exist within the same archetype of MMOs and that of a tab target MMO. So I don't have a great answer. I mean, I, I gave you some answers in the middle of that and hopefully that was a little enlightening, but that's my overall thought on the question that was presented to me. All right, I have a Dauntless question in here, so I want to take that because I was playing that right before we got started with this. Uh, so, Mr. Happy, what do you think of the new armor progression in Dauntless? Do you think the linear scaling of resistance invalidates the little perks each piece has, e.g. part damage? So, because of the sheer number of sets at endgame, I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, currently, if anyone hasn't, I'm going to be putting out a video about it, but for a TLDR, uh, Dauntless is... It very much has a linear progression system where you progress on, you know, the easier stuff to get to the harder stuff. And as you get to the harder stuff, the armor sets get better. And uh, each of them has their own perks and bonuses. But eventually what happens is you reach what's called the Ever Game. And the Ever Game rotates four uh, enhanced versions of the behemoths known as Dire Behemoths. Uh, for example, you have the Moon Reaver Shrike, or you have the Rage Tail Nash, or you have the uh the frostback pangar you know these modify these modified versions that have one or two new moves more aggressive um hit a lot harder and they each have their own armor set which has their own benefits at end game and the idea is that you know with these weeklies you can work towards these sets within these time frames and then use them to also take on shroud and rezakiri who are always on the heroic list and always have their own sets um i think that while working up I think they've done a much better job now in Dauntless of making you feel like it's okay to stop and build additional armor sets. Um, having some, as someone who just played Monster Hunter World, I pretty much stuck with one or two armor sets the whole way up, regardless of the resistances they were giving me. Um, and it made it so I never really stopped to farm. I kind of just took like 10, 15 hours in Monster Hunter and just blazed through everything until I could get to the point where I could just grind Slayer rank on the same three or four dudes. Which is kind of what it ends up being in Dauntless. Except that I still wasn't even collecting armors, only working on a single set. Because I was the set I had the most fun with, and it was the one set I wanted to complete. And it was all RNG focused anyway, because I needed certain jewels and certain materials. Anyway, so, no, I think they've, they've done a, a better job of making me want to build armors while I'm progressing in Dauntless. But I don't think they necessarily need to validate all the lower tier armor sets when they're more focused on having these dire versions of those old behemoths with their own armor sets at endgame. Uh, mm, that being said, that's not the thing I'm excited about with Dauntless. With Dauntless, they've introduced the concept of exotic weapons and armor, which have game-changing effects. Uh, one example, I actually got the schematic for the sword to drop earlier. It's called The Hunger, and it basically changes the sword into this just monstrously powerful thing that... Uh, drains lifesteal. Normally when you use the sword and its special skill in Dauntless, it shoots a beam and then your gauge slowly decreases while you get increased attack speed. With the hunger, instead you get increased damage when you use the Q, triple the damage, and all of your attacks drain your health. On top of that, if you reactivate the special, you can hit the enemy with like a hand that steals the health, specifically the health that you use to deal that additional damage, and give it back to you so it's almost like a closer so that you end up with the same amount of health that you started this super powered phase in having game changing exotics like that that you can grind and work towards as long as they have enough of them i feel there's a lot of expression and a lot of goal setting with that and that's the thing i'm more excited for with dauntless but like most things with dauntless it's still so early in development we don't have enough of that in there so we need to see more of that we need to see more behemoths we need to see more exotics we need to see how many exotics there be you know what do the different exotics actually do there's that's the thing dauntless needs to do to really stand out is 
find a way to expand on this exotic system make it make you feel good for going in and getting a new weapon getting a new armor set and uh building in this this these massive effects to really make your character come alive in its own way but we need to see more of it and that's the armor progression i want to talk about the most when i think of dauntless all right i've got we've got a lot of great twitch questions uh in the chat this time normally i get like two and that's it you guys are making up for how short the 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 forum questions were this one's really simple i guess again because of the wow to 14 series uh so happy why do you play 14 over wow super simple question so final fantasy is a game that i have a lot of brand loyalty to or franchise loyalty to you know when i was young i didn't grow up with pc gaming i didn't grow up with warcraft 1 2 and 3 they're games that i eventually invested in later when i started playing games on pc before that i had consoles so what did i do I played Final Fantasy games. You know, those I didn't even play Final Fantasy until late into the PlayStation era. But even then, it still became a brand I instantly grasped onto. Like from the second that I played it, it just resonated with me immediately. And I started with Final Fantasy VIII. So that's a surprise to a lot of people. Um, and it just stuck with me. So when Final Fantasy XI came out and I played that, you know, again, seven years of my life on and off, it just... I developed that brand loyalty even more over that time. And then with 14, same deal. I just took the loyalty that I had. With World of Warcraft, when I played it, I liked it. I liked it a lot. But what I, ultimately, I just found myself having these moments with World of Warcraft where I just wasn't as attached to it because it just wasn't this brand that I felt loyal to. I didn't feel like, you know, I have to play this game every day. I didn't feel like I have to reach these goals. I, I didn't care as much about certain things it didn't feel like it had the same finesse given to it uh things like the world and the story and the lore that's way better now by the way even though some people still say you know it's got retconning issues and stuff like that they still put a lot more effort forth and i appreciate that i watch all the cinematics and i watch noble if you don't know who that guy is on youtube i watch that guy's videos all the fucking time um and he makes me still love that world and and it feels a lot more enriched because of that guy so um it, it just i never felt as attached to it though so it was so easy for me to just be like you know what i'm not having fun i'm gonna leave and that was it and that would just be the end of it i just left in the middle of heroic Prague at the beginning of cataclysm because i just wasn't having fun anymore on my uh on my demo lock uh demo lock yeah yeah demo, yeah demo lock that's the one that's what i was playing at the time yeah so uh yeah i i don't know that's that's the main reason i'm just way more loyal to the final fantasy brand franchise whichever word all right, and that's going to be a wrap for the YouTube side of things. Twitch chat, good questions this week. Even even the ones that I didn't include in the video, good questions this week, good discussions this week. Uh, so before we wrap up the video, though, want to thank our usual sponsors. Uh, we do have a couple of new ones added onto the list. One of you uh, pledged but didn't send me a name, so I'm just going to say a name. And uh, if you hear this and you want me to make it something else, then shoot me a message over on Patreon. But that's what uh, our sponsor list is. Those of us who support the, uh, those of you who support the channel over on Patreon to kind of that hashtag demonetized on YouTube, which we don't even know the status of anymore because it happens, it doesn't happen. It's hard to tell because I get emails for every video I post saying these are now eligible and it's like a day later, so I have no idea. But anyway, these are the people who Enjoy the content, wanted to support the channel extra. We, of course, have our patron of Mike Kuja Cross of the Genova server on the YouTube side of things. You guys will see an image right here that they provided for me uh, last week for State of the Realm. So thank you again, Kuja. You've been an awesome supporter over on Patreon, and we heavily appreciate your support. The rest of these names, I, again, it's the first of the month is passed at this point. I haven't gone and checked to see which names are still on the list, which names are added or moved or, or things. I need to I need to go through that and make sure that it's all in place because then now all of the the charging of everyone who's a, a Patreon a patron should be completed. But let's just read the names that I have on the list, including the ones that I added uh, for our standard sponsors. We have Red Wings. Uh, Red Wings of the Baron FC from Zalera. We have Frey Blackheart. We have Sidus Oreo on Shiva. Sid Hellwind of Gilgamesh. Afro Ninja from Malboro. Cheese from Leviathan. Sploda. That Lame Weeb. Ashley of Cerberus. Argotti Tristan on Midgard Summer. Fafarian. Rendell. Jurassic Wool. Rule. Stevie Rex. And Neon. For our elite sponsors, we have Asuka Wake from the Genova server. We have Jacob. We have Sarah and the Avalanche family on Malboro. We have Johnny Odin of Tonberry. Nyrick Vizsla, the Emerald Dragoon. Kefka and the Great Eagles on Exodus. Dark Graver. Katayoshi. Ski of Pony from Ragnarok. Ra Zephyr from Exodus, Rylanator Westhouse, the Purple Warrior, Adric Red Steel on Exodus, 
Lexi Valentine, Mantar and the Revivus FC from Zodiac, Sarah Cream and Tribes from Genova, Renoa Chikara, Goisha Valfer of Siren, Hirsch First of Fairy, Phoenix Down FC on Goblin, Saren from Zodiac. Then we have our premium sponsors. We have Diablo, Holy Tabasco, Red Thorn and Sarah, Kern Ioni, Askin Hawk from Shiva, Oscar, Kraz015, Mustang, The Serenity FC on Ultros, Kat Kazuma, Serial Kira and the Reckless Tea Party on Cactar, Ignis Peregrine from the Diablo server, Velestra of Fanfret, Knocked Quarters from Excalibur. Kurobos Moonscar, Nakat Niyame of Balmung, uh, Private Mikey, Spike, Nadia Kurosame, Rudy Rudiger, Tin Colossus, Killer Hackman, Raul Jr., Ramil Gaming, and Kiltastic Jones. I know one or two of those names was off or either not on the list anymore, but uh, that's just what I had on the list. So I am going to make that uh, change now. That way I don't uh, that way I don't forget next time. But thank you to all of our Patreon sponsors. And real quick, I want to give an extra thank you to everyone uh, this week. This last week's been pretty rough on me. Uh, as you know, the last few months... I've, it's been, everything's been a lot different for me. And, uh, every week I do this, every week I read that list, every week I read the comments, every week I have my streams, my YouTube, just everything. This last week in particular has been like one of those rougher weeks. And some of you will know what I'm talking about emotionally speaking. So a special thank you because it's the last couple months. You guys have just been amazingly supportive and it's it's made it easy to get back into this my content's not where, really where i want it to be i can see lapses in in judgment when it comes to certain things that i write down for scripts or certain things or certain editing jobs that i, I can't bring myself or motivate i find myself half finishing videos a lot now and then not releasing them because i just can't bring them to a point where i feel comfortable releasing them it, there's just so many different things that happen behind the scenes like when I look at things or when I how I feel about certain things that I don't ever really say so you probably all just assume that I'm like okay with everything the way it comes out or that I maybe I'm not working on something that I say I want to work on or that there's an idea it's just, the, there's a lot of mystery as to what's going on behind the scenes with me I'm doing okay but I'm doing as okay as I'm gonna be so those of you who have continued to support, those of you who continue to watch the YouTube channel, join us over on Twitch. It means a lot. And I just wanted to say that because that's the kind of week I was having where I wanted to, that's the kind of week, it's just the way I was feeling this week. So thank you. With that though, I think we could finally wrap up this week's episode. Uh, thank you again to the Twitch chat for having questions that meant this wasn't just a 15 minute long weekly Q and A. And we had some good discussions with that. I'm going to hang out with my Twitch chat for a few more minutes while I find someone to host. Um, but those of you on the YouTube side of things, be sure to ask your questions for next week. Go to the description of the video, find the forum, and ask your questions there, because it guarantees that I'll see them and I'll get to answer them. But anyway, I will see all of you finally, ladies and gentlemen, on YouTube next week. And again, reminder, stay the realm Friday this week, not Tuesday. I will see you guys then. And uh, Twitch, I'll hang out for a few more minutes. So YouTube, bye-bye. Till next time, take care.